Thank you, Janet. Good morning. Welcome to our worship today and online. Thank you for tuning in today. We're really happy to have you. Spring is here. Really? I mean, wow, it's supposed to be 63, I think, today. So that's crazy. And the only downside on the whole spring thing is now I start waiting to hear the first person to tell me they found a wood tick. So uh, if this were biology week, uh, you know, I'd feel like oh, I better not give one of God's creatures a bad time. But uh, it's chemistry week, so yeah, I don't like wood ticks, not at all. Um, we have, for those of you online, just to let you know, um, when we're singing the songs and that sort of thing, we'd love you to join in. Sometimes I tell you, sing out loud, and, and then I realize maybe you don't know how to do that as far as words go. But we do have a downloadable worship folder uh, that has the words and everything you would need for this worship service. And it's uh, on our website. It's emailed out for those that are on our email list. So you can grab that worship folder and, and kind of join in the songs as well. Um, a big welcome to the fan club of Leander Voss, who is going to be baptized here in just a little bit. Uh, great to have all of our visitors uh, and, and guests uh, who are here for Leander today. That's a good day. Behind me, you're going to see these. This is the aftermath of our prayer blizzard from last Sunday. We had our walkathon, and uh, each of these snowflakes uh, represents some prayers that were being said. Um, and a big thank you, first to Lori Dingman, who who spearheaded this event, and it was just kind of a great, a great event where we uh, some money was raised for both Healing Haiti and the Yes Network. Thank you to those who participated and raised the money. We really appreciate it. It was, it was a good deal. And uh, now you'll want to check uh, for our March, uh, actually it'll happen in April, but during the month of March, we're collecting things, spring into action, uh, things that will help the homeless. So uh, check your bulletin and newsletter about details for that. We also have a new presence in our worship today. Pastor Ann Bjorklin uh, is, is now here among us. We're excited to have her on staff here. She's our interim pastor. Um, pastor Ann and her wife, Teresa, is in the back room there helping Patty with the sound, but uh, we're really happy to have you here. And uh, there's a big doings uh, this Saturday that uh, Ann might want to tell you a little bit about. So first of all, thank you for welcoming me here, and um, I'm looking forward to serving with all of you. Uh, I would like to an ex extend an invitation to you to at attend my ordination, which will be taking place on Saturday at 2 p.m. at Bethlehem. And um, if you are interested in attending in person, there you can go to um, BethlehemLutheran.org slash Bjorkland to sign up to attend in person. Otherwise, you can watch online. They will have streaming available as well. Um, and then also on Sunday, excited to, uh, to be installed here uh, at both services. So looking forward to that as well and seeing you there and um, meeting all of you. Thank you. Uh, it's good to have you here, Anne. Thanks for being here. Well, we're doing this uh, Lenten sermon series, uh, uh, The Good God Experiment, and this week's theme, chemistry. Uh, and if you um, are on our mailing list, you received a Lenten kit, and inside there, uh, for the week of March 7th, we've got a little chemistry sheet with an experiment to do this week. And let me encourage you to do this experiment uh, because it's a great one, the elephant toothpaste experiment with some good questions on the back of how this connects with our faith. Um, for those who may be online, uh, let us know. If you want one of these, we can make sure you get one. Uh, or those who are visiting here, we have extras in the office and we'd love to share. So uh, we'd love to have you have one of these. Also, uh, on our Facebook page, we have people doing a check-in 
every day uh, during the week, uh, offering a little something about that week's theme. So with chemistry, the theme is transformation. And so this week, we're going to have people from our congregation sharing stories of, of God transforming their lives. So check out our Facebook page every day this week. Um, and then you can also receive a remind text in the morning uh, on your phone. You don't have to respond to it, but it has a little verse and a thought, a question for the day, um, just to think about. And if you want to sign up for that, there's a little code that, that you punch in to uh, text a certain number. Um, and that information is also uh, in those packets on our website. You'll be able to find that out. Saturday, the 20th of March, um, if uh, we are going to be doing our first communion class. So for any kids, we don't have an age limit, so young, old, doesn't matter. You can sign up and be a part of our first communion class, and then on Monday, Thursday, Holy Thursday of Holy Week, that's when they'll receive their first communion. Now, we do need you to register for that because we have to order chalices that the kids are going to paint and decorate. So um, you can find the form on our website and fill that out, and, and, and then we need one parent at least, but both parents can come, but one parent at least to come with each child on the 20th at 9 o'clock. Um, Good Friday, we are doing a food drive, and during the season of Lent, we're inviting you to collect food for our food shelf. Uh, get a box, put it in your pantry or your kitchen, put things in it throughout the season, and on Good Friday, between 9 and 12, we'd love to have you drop it off here. We're going to really try to do as much collecting as we can that day. Um, and. There is a list, it's in our newsletter coming up that you may have received or will soon receive, and inside there's a list of things we're looking for. Um, that's the stuff we give out regularly, so, you know, if you can stick to the list, that really helps us out. You know, if you bring other things, we'll offer it, but, but those are the things we really need. And so you can check out that list and uh, start collecting that stuff for our food drive. Um, today, for this service, with transformation as our theme, we're doing something a little different with our scripture readings. Oftentimes, in worship, we do one or two scripture readings. Today, you get seven, but they're really short, like maybe a verse or two long. And you should have received this sheet, um, Chemistry Week Reflections. And those seven verses are also on here. And I invite you to take that home with you and, and let one of those verses guide you each day. Uh, we're talking about transformation. These are verses of transformation. And we're hoping you can dwell with that verse for the day and let it seep into your, your day and your life and let it transform you, let it react in you a little bit. So take that home and I encourage you to do that. And we're going to start out with the first of those seven verses right now. Following that, we're going to sing the only hymn I know that has the words boiling test tubes in it. So on Chemistry Week, we got to sing that one. So here's a verse, and then let's sing together. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. At the time God made earth in heaven, before any grasses or shrubs had sprouted from the ground, God hadn't yet set rain on earth, nor was there anyone around to work the ground. God formed the human out of dirt from the ground and blew into his nostrils the breath of life. The man came alive, a living soul.
Well, I would invite uh, the congregation to uh, turn to your baptismal bulletin. Try to get my mic out from under my mask. There we go. All right, well, I may have to be turned down a little bit in the back there because I'm awfully loud. Today, we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. In this water, we believe God forgives us, saves us from sin and death, and raises us to new life. God welcomes us into the family of God and makes us one in the body of Christ. God empowers us with the gift of God's Holy Spirit, and we are sent out to be light of Christ in the world. Parents, you have presented Leander Jaeger Voss to, for baptism, and today God makes some big promises to Leander, but you are also asked to make some big promises to God, to bring him to worship, teach the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, read the Bible with him, provide him with opportunities to experience God's love, join in God's work out in the world, care for others and the world God loves, and join Christ's work for justice and peace. So, do you promise to raise Leander as a baptized child of God? And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Leander in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Yes, we promise. And people of God, do you promise to support Leander in his family and his family as they grow in their faith? Yes, yes. we promise. So parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin and death that draw us all away from God? If so, answer, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? And congregation, please join us. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Pour out your Holy Spirit the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life. To you, we give our honor and praise. Amen. And I've got a little helper today, London. Yeah, big sister is going to help me pour some water in here so we can make it nice and warm for your little baby brother. You want to help me put, yeah, push on that. There you go. Yeah, we want to get it nice and warm for him. Absolutely. Very good. I'm going to have you also help wipe his little head in just a little bit. So I'll give you that little towel, and in just a moment, you'll be able to wipe his head, okay? All right. Yeah, he is kind of a, a, a big five-month baby. <laughs> he's, a, he's a fun little chunk, but I really like that outfit. That's cute. Okay, here we go, Leander. Leander Jaeger, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Leander, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Oh, good job. And now, there you go, big sister, you can wipe him off a little bit. Yeah, oh, good job. <laughs> Let's pray together. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. 
cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Leander Yeager with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Well, on a baptismal day, we light a candle, just kind of like a birthday candle, because it is really a new birth for Leander, and God's light shines brightly in him. Go ahead. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your God in heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of all life, look with kindness upon Danielle and Justin and let them ever rejoice in the gift you've given them. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So join me in welcoming Leander. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And hey, let's, let's give Leander a good welcome round of applause. I'm sad in this time of COVID, usually this is when we do a little parade, but, but you'll just have to take a look at this, this little, there you go, I'll hold them up. <laughs> kind of, very good. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations, everyone. We continue with our video. You can blow that up.
online, kids cozy on up, and uh, for our kids who are gathered here today. We're talking about transformation, which is kind of a big word, um, but I don't know if they still have this, but uh, hello, are you going to help me with the children's sermon? <laughs> you, you could sit right, right there. That would, that would be good. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's the way it used to be. <laughs> so anyway, uh, they used to have these things called transformers. Do they still have those kids out there? So I, I think it was quite a while ago. So it's like you get a little car, but then you can manipulate it, and, and suddenly it's, it's like this big, ugly robot. Uh, like a big mean looking thing. Uh, so that's pretty cool. They didn't have those way back when, but uh, that's what transformation is, changing it from one thing to another. And so on chemistry week, that, that's why I like chemistry because you can see things react and what used to be this way now it looks this way. And all you kids out there, have your, kid, have your parents help you do this elephant toothpaste experiment. I think you're gonna really love it. I wanted to do a little chemistry reaction here for the children's sermon this morning. Um, and uh, yeah, so I have a brother who is a chemistry professor at Creighton University down in Nebraska. So I texted him and I, I know that he and his students do this chemistry magic show. They put it on the road, they do it in different schools. And I've seen it and there's one uh, reaction that I was hoping to do here for you. So I said, hey, any chance you can tell me what chemicals I need, and I want to do this for my children's sermon today. And then he texted me back and said, here, I'll send you a video clip of my students doing it. So I, I kind of don't think he trusted me with the chemicals. Um, and you'll hear why in my sermon in just a little bit. But anyway, so here is a video of his students doing this, this fun little reaction that I wanted to show you.
why he didn't trust me to do that. <laughs> well, anyway, so she began with these four jars of clear liquid, then something got added and it got cloudy, got kind of dark or orange or whatever, but then something was added and it went back to clear. That's kind of like us, and that's why I like that experiment, because we kind of begin clear like that, like little Leander, you know, just we're little babies, or bigger babies, and <laughs> we, we, you know, we're pure, we're innocent, but then life happens, and so, I bet some of you kids out there have made a mistake, or maybe you, you did something wrong every now and then. The older you get, the more you pile up with that kind of stuff, and your, your water gets cloudy, and orange, or dark, but then God enters our lives. And that's what's so great about when Jesus comes into our life, he's like that last liquid she poured in there and stirred it up and it cleared it right up. And that's why, that's why you're here. When you come to church, a little bit of that is being poured in your jar. And when you go to Sunday school, when you read the Bible, when you talk about God, when you pray, a little more is being poured into that jar of yours, clearing that up. And it transforms us which is so cool. So let's pray to God and say thank you for transforming us. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for, for coming into our lives, our lives that are dark or colored or changed in some way or another, not for the good. And you come in and bring us to our whole self. So thank you so much for transforming us by your love and presence. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verse 2. Stop intimidating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. <laughs> Let us confess our sins before God and one another. God's mercy is deeper than the depths of the sea, and God's grace is wider than the whole of the earth. Trusting in that mercy and that grace, let us make our confession before God and each other. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come before you, our lives wide open. You know the mistakes the misjudgments, the people we've hurt. Sometimes, oh God, we forget people or toss them aside. The difficult ones, the needy ones, the ones that are hard to spend time with, the ones who confront us. And sometimes when we do things like that, it's not really about other people, but about us. We're uncomfortable or feel guilty or we follow brighter, shinier people, or we worry about well, what will make us look good. We are in such desperate need of your forgiveness. We need to be forgiven for our sins, for our mistakes, for mistaking what the world values with what you value. Help us to be better, to see more clearly, to care more thoroughly. 
Please take time for your own silent confession and reflection. New every moment is God's love for us. And so new each day is our opportunity to clean the slate and to be assured of God's forgiveness and love. On this new day, sisters and brothers in Christ, the mercies of a God are from everlasting to everlasting. Here is the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please say it with me. In Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Thanks be to God. Remembering that you are in Christ, you are free forever, a beloved child of God. Please make the sign of the cross on your forehead. Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 4, verse 7 through 10. But this beautiful treasure is contained in us, cracked pots made of earth and clay, so that the transcendent character of this power will be clearly seen as coming from God and not from us. We are cracked and chipped from our afflictions on all sides, but we are not crushed by them. We are bewildered at times, but we do not give in to despair. We are persecuted, but we have not been abandoned. We have been knocked down, but we are not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the reality of the brutal death and suffering of Jesus. As a result, his resurrection life rises and reveals its wondrous powers in our bodies as well. Here ends the reading. Our gospel acclamation today will be first sung by our worship team, and then we're going to sing it again, and we invite you to join in singing the second time.
Gospel of John, chapter 4, verses 13 and 14. Jesus said, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again and again. Anyone who drinks the water I give will never thirst, not ever. The water I give will be an artesian spring within, gushing fountains of endless life. So a couple of weeks ago, when we kicked off this uh, sermon, Lenten sermon series, The Good God Experiment, uh, and it was geology week, I confessed to being somewhat of a rock nerd, and I even majored in geology in college. Well, I'll have you know, before I majored in geology, I majored in chemistry. Um, and in fact, I think I, I probably went through about seven different majors in my four years of college. Had a hard time uh, landing on one. Uh, but I'm pretty sure I started out as a chemistry major uh, because my brother, Bruce, who is nine years older than I am, was all about chemistry. And uh, growing up, I, I wanted to be just like my older bro, right? You know, so I was gleaning all things chemistry from him at an early age. In fact, I'll have you know, standing before you this morning is the winner of the Minnesota State Science Fair Chemistry Division, eighth grade. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think my brother had a bit to do with that. So I think some of you have heard me tell the story of a time when my brother put together this amazing chemistry set and he gave it to me for Christmas. Uh, now this was probably when he was maybe a senior in college finishing up his degree and I was, I would say about 11 or 12 years old at the time. My mother was 100% against this idea because she figured for sure I was gonna blow up the house or uh, burn myself with chemicals. Well close. Christmas night, after we opened all our gifts, um, then I hauled all my plunder to my bedroom. And of course, this amazing chemistry set was, was like the highlight of all the gifts I received. So I quickly started ex exploring it. <laughs> Holy man, does sulfuric acid eat through a bedroom rug in no time at all. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'd be pretty sure that the scorch marks on the hardwood floor are still very present and you can see them if you lifted up the carpet in the third bedroom at 503 Thomas down in Marshall, Minnesota. Mother was not happy with us. <laughs> And while I do regret opening up that bottle of sulfuric acid, I must say that's the part of chemistry I love the most, watching things react, change form, change substance. A, a perfectly boring bedroom rug now bubbling and sizzling away. Well, I do hope you all try that elephant toothpaste experiment, and I promise there will be no rugs that are liquefied in the process, uh, but the reaction is impressive. This perfectly unremarkable substance, a liquid in the case of the elephant toothpaste experiment, um, having another substance added to it, and suddenly this, this dramatic change takes place. And of course, the parallel being drawn here is how our lives are changed, transformed when God is introduced, when the Holy Spirit is poured into them. And you know, we are all witnesses to this all the time. Our midweek Lenten speakers, those daily check-ins on our Facebook page, the stories of people you know, or maybe your own story, lives changed because of God moving, working, reacting in those lives. And sometimes the change can be dramatic, uh, almost in an instant, like sulfuric acid meeting a bedroom rug. Dale was an inactive member of my church. Uh, his wife attended worship occasionally, but I don't remember ever seeing Dale come to church. Dale got roped into his words uh, going with some friends to a promise keeper gathering in Minneapolis one weekend. 
Now, this was a while back. I don't think they have these Promise Keeper gatherings anymore, but they used to have these big gatherings around the country that were kind of like, like big rallies, uh, Christian rallies for men. Um, and, and I would have never pegged Dale to be someone who would have attended one. But when Dale got back from that gathering, he made an appointment to see me. And holy man, he was a holy man. At, at some point during that gathering, God was introduced into his life. And, and what a reaction, a complete transformation of priorities and values, perspective and outlook, a completely different father and different husband and now active church member. Impressive reaction. But you know, it's not always that impressive or immediate or even easy to see. Some of you may notice that uh, I'm driving a new truck these days. Well, newer. Uh, from a 2002 Avalanche to now a 2011 Ram. And not one piece of duct tape on it <laughs> yet. Um, so it would seem our good old avalanche was suffering from the effects of an ongoing, slow, steady chemical reaction going on over years and years of that uh, truck's life, especially underneath the whole exterior of the truck. And of course, I'm talking about our good old friend, Rust. Our dear custodian, another Bruce in my life, has told me that they have these crazy things called car washes these days. <laughs> yeah, I guess, unfortunately, I did not frequent too many of those with my avalanche. I will do better with the ram. God is about changing lives. Sometimes that change can take place over a long period of time, slowly, steadfastly, but perhaps unnoticed until, until a person stops and looks back in their life and then they start thinking, you know what? I'm not the same person I used to be. God has been working in my life. So in dramatic ways, in small steadfast ways, our lives change when we encounter God's presence, when we meet Jesus and are moved by the Spirit, His presence. There are a number of us who are watching the series, The Chosen, and uh, I strongly recommend it. It's a great series. It's a unique telling of Jesus's ministry. And the first few episodes that we've been watching have been about the first days of Jesus's ministry, the calling of his disciples and followers, people whose lives were changed by their encounter with Jesus. So we just finished episode number six, and there's one individual in that episode, Matthew, who is a tax collector, who has, who has not yet said, yes, Jesus, I will follow you. We see him curious, he's interested, but he's hesitant. He's not sure if he can trust this potential change in his life. He's not sure he wants to embrace this new way of living that comes with following Jesus. And you know, I think a lot of us can be a little bit like Matthew, hesitant, second-guessing, not sure we dare to allow our lives to become so different, different priorities, different perspectives, different purpose. So maybe we kind of follow at a distance. Matthew seems to be doing that, at least in episode six. Or like Dale may have been doing before that Promise Keeper rally. And maybe this is where this whole chemistry reaction metaphor kind of breaks down a little bit. Because you see, if you were to do that elephant toothpaste experiment and you mix those two liquids together, I can promise you the result is not going to just sit there and think about, should I react or not? You know, it's not going to be hesitant and second guessing. That doesn't happen with chemicals. But it does happen with people. People like Matthew and Dale and many of us oftentimes in life. Over and over throughout the Bible, God promises us a change, a transformation, a new creation that we trust God's word, God's promises, God's plan 
for our lives. Why, just those verses on that, that sheet that, that you have of, of the seven verses you're hearing today, it's all there on how God will change you. Strength in those weak times. Confidence where there is fear. Peace in the midst of turmoil. Hope and new life in the face of death. And suddenly the things that used to matter don't matter quite as much anymore, like fitting in, like having enough, like watching out for number one. Doesn't matter. There's a potential reaction here that will change your life. And on God's end of the experiment, there's no hesitancy, no second thoughts, no under certain circumstances. God's gracious gift to change us into a new creation is, well, to coin a phrase from Geology Week, rock solid. And if we want to experience that transformation in this life, it's going to require a little trust on our part, a little let God let go. William Bridges writes this book about transitions. That's really a very good book, talking about how we go through transitions at different times in our life. And sometimes those transitions are brought upon by a major event happening in our life, like getting married or retiring or losing a loved one. These events change us. They, in a way, create a new identity for us that, that some people are, are better able to embrace than others. I remember marrying this couple many years ago, uh, Rick and Tina. And uh, six months after the wedding, Tina was in my office wanting to leave Rick. <laughs> it seems that even though Rick was married, he lived his life like he was still single. He was, he was going out every night. He was hanging out with his buddies. I mean, nothing had changed from his single life. And even though Rick now had a new identity, it was too hard for him to let go of the old identity. He didn't trust that the new identity was where he needed now to thrive. God creates each of us with this new identity as little Leander Voss received in his baptism today. As all of us receive forgiveness just moments ago when we heard those words and said those words, we are forgiven. As we will soon be fed by the very presence of God when we receive Jesus' body and blood. And you know, when we die, that reaction, that transformation is going to be unstoppable. We will be transformed because God's life is simply more powerful than our death. But you know, why not experience that transformation, that change in identity now in this life? Why wait till we die? Can we let go of that old identity? Can we trust in what God has, has uh, in store for us that is so much more than we could ever imagine? Can we stop following Jesus from a distance and welcome the new creation that God will make of us? We can. And what we need is a catalyst. Yeah, as long as we're talking chemistry today, a catalyst is something that encourages and enhances a reaction to take place. And in this case, it would surely seem that the catalyst we need is trust. Allowing God to make us and shape us into that new creation God gave life itself for us to become. It's, it's letting down our guard, opening up our hearts, welcoming the Holy Spirit to move us and renew us and change our lives for the better. So let me end with a verse that's, that's not on those verse seat, sheets. It's not one of the seven you're hearing today be, because those are about transformation. And this verse is about trust. And it's, it's from my all-time favorite Psalm 131. Lord, my heart is meek before you. I'm content to not pursue questions or matters over my head, things I think I know. I am humbled and quieted in your presence. Like a child in its mother's arms, I'm your resting child, and my soul is content in you. 
Oh, people of God, your time has come to quietly trust. Trust in the Lord, now and forever. Amen. Our worship team is going to sing a, a piece of special music for you. The name of it is New Wine, which has nothing to do with our new wine group, but I was kind of tickled that, that they all wore new wine shirts today. So. chapter 36, verse 26. I will plant a new heart and new spirit inside of you. I will take out your stubborn, stony heart and give you a willing, tender heart of flesh. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, through you, and because of you, we are transformed into new creations. The heavens declare your glory and renew your creation and provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water, protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems, give all the people the willingness to repent 
when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Today, we remember 56 years ago, the march from Selma to Montgomery. And may that memory of this peaceful protest encourage and change us and embolden us to want to transform a country that is truly of social justice. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering. Today we, we ask for healing on Sherry, Chris, Rich, Doris, and Howard. And we ask that you defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. We give thanks today for our newest brother in Christ, Leander Voss. Be with him as he grows and matures in his faith, and be with all his mother and father and all his family and friends as they encourage and nurture a life in you. We give thanks today for the ministry of Anne and how she will be working with us. And we also give thanks for her wife, Teresa, who already this morning has helped me greatly. Transform us now as we let go of our self-serving identity to really be new creations founded in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. The book of Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 18 and 19. Stop dwelling on the past. Don't even remember these former things. I'm doing something brand new, something unheard of. Even now it sprouts and grows and matures. Don't you perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and open up flowing streams in the desert. As we prepare for communion, if you haven't yet received your elements, please do so now. And uh, if you are at home, please gather those for this uh, time of communion as well. As we think about chemistry, I think about the ways that God transforms and changes bread and wine into himself and calls us in to transform our lives as well. I give you thanks, God, for your love and compassion. We pray that you would bless these gifts that you have provided for us and let all who are fed by them know that they are truly a beloved child of God. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray as our Lord taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to uh, remove your bread. Hear the words that Jesus shared with us 
and with his disciples over 2,000 years ago, the body of Christ given for you. I invite you to open your cup. And again, hear these words, the blood of Christ shed for you. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. We'll now join in to be alive. Corinthians chapter 5 verses 16 and 17. From now on therefore we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we no longer regard him in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. And so as you go on your way, opening your lives to the transformative power of God's presence and love, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.